they've prayed and before God himself, they believe with all their hearts that it is the perfect will of God for them to be joined together in the spirit. They've made their decision. So from now until the end of this age, I charge you to do everything in your power to see that this union stays strong, happy, and prosperous. <coughs> Woe to anyone who would tamper with it and cause it to be anything other than prosperous in the eyes of God. This is a miraculous thing. And it is of God. Ellie, do you take Shemika as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loves the church, to protect her for the rest of your lives? Then turn to her and make this profession of your faith. I, Ellie, according to the word of God, leave my father and my mother, and I join myself to you. To be a husband to you from this moment forward, we shall be one. Shemika, do you take Ellie as your husband, submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord and showing reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of your lives? Then make this profession of your faith to him. I, Shemika, according to the word of God, submit myself to you to be a wife to you <coughs> from this moment forward. We shall be one. Here's a good wedding. May I have the bride's ring, please? A ring is a very precious thing. It's a token of your faith and of your love. This ring is made out of precious metal. It is a never-ending circle that indicates the continuing love of God, a love that never fails, never presents itself haughtily, nor puffed up. The love of God and the faith of God is what God causes, what causes his power to move in our lives. I want you to wear these rings with a reminder of your faith and a continual reminder of the confession of the faith that you're going to make to each other to God. God says, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. If anyone can break up this union, it will be safe to give him no peace. Give him no peace at all. Ellie, take this ring and put it on your finger and say this to you. With this ring, I am with it is a token of my love and of my faith. And I release it now in Jesus' name. You may have to go on That is big. <laughs> That's the biggest ring. never-ending sign of love or it can be a shackle. And I'm going to charge you with a memory that you should always remember that you make a stand by your side, not under your feet. You have the responsibility of being the head of this union, and you have a spiritual responsibility. And I want you to wear this ring with the remember that she's your helpmate. You must never be a shackle of dominance. Not that I would think that could happen in this relationship, but always a reminder of your faith and of your love. Now, Shemika, I'm, I'm going to give you this ring, that big ring. I want you to place it on his finger with these things in mind. Hold on. There's no place in the Word of God that gives two people the right to dominate each other. In your vows, it's that you submit yourselves one to another. So it's a submission one to another. With these thoughts in mind, place this on his finger and say this place. With this ring, I be wed. I give it as a token of my faith. I believe with all my heart that this is forever. It is my love and my faith in Jesus' name.
Jesus has been invited into the position of authority in this marriage relationship. The purple strand represents the groom. The majesty of God is hid over the husband as a husband submits himself to the Lord. The Lord will in turn hold our marriage together through the husband. The white strand represents the bride. This strand represents the purity of the bride of Christ. As each has received Jesus Christ as personal Savior and Lord, they are cleansed through Christ. Center of your marriage. This strain will 